Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing this lovely little um, picture. This is from um, Johanna Basford's miniature Enchanted Forest. It's actually a small part of this um, lovely tree trunk picture. I think lots of people like the tree trunk, but uh, it is just a small part of it. So we've got the mushrooms from the top and also the cute little butterfly. So I thought we would have a go. Um, I am going to zoom in a little bit more. Whoa, I'm very sorry. There we go. So we're going to start with these two. Now, I'm going to be using my Ergosoft pencils today. And uh, I'm going to be doing these in a sort of red. Um, uh, red and um, orange. But what I'm going to do to start with is something a little bit different. Now the circles on here, I want to be lighter and I'm going to go over them with this white first in quite a hard pressure. Now the reason for this is because I will find it very difficult to avoid colouring on top of the white dots so I'm not going to. So if I put this white on first it will hopefully act as a little bit of a barrier to the coloured pencil and will make them a slightly different colour. If it doesn't work then I look a bit of an idiot and um, we can use some gel pen or something on them. But I have found in the past that by doing this first, it's a trick that I used to do before I had a gel pen, it can help to reduce the colour that goes onto these areas and uh, will help to uh, us to have a different coloured bit. Let's see how well it works. Now be careful if you're doing this because um, you need to press quite hard and you don't want to make a mess or dents or anything in your paper. Now this is also because it's really sharp, it's pushing down hard into the paper. You don't want to push right through it, be a disaster. There we go. I'm happy that I've put enough, but we'll wait and see if it works. It'll be an interesting experiment. Now I'm going to start with my lightest orange. Um, I'm just grabbing it out. Ooh, I need to leave that pen out so I know what I've used. Pencil, sorry. I'm going to start with number 42. You can start with whatever your lightest orange is. And I'm just going to put a covering all over this page. Now we'll look and see what's happening with the, uh, with the circles. They're going slightly orange, some of them more than others. So that's interesting. Can certainly feel where I've coloured. So that's it for that, just really light covering of orange. And now the next one. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, hmm, yeah let's do slightly different to normal because I often do these the same. We're going to do more colour on the edges than the middle. So we're going to fade this towards the centre. Look at that, I've missed the centre of that and it's given me a dot. That's okay. We can tidy those up at the end. We'll just see if it works. It's quite an interesting experiment. So more of this orange on the outside and less towards the middle. So we start to look like we've got a bit of a shine on the centre of the mushroom slash toadstool. I was going to look up the difference between mushrooms and toadstools. I wondered whether, say, mushrooms are a type of toadstool or vice versa, so we could use one word which would work for both. I just don't know. Now we're going in with another shade, number 24, which is even darker. And just putting a gentle layer on each edge. Just a small amount. 
there we go and my last colour is number two number two yes number two and we don't really want much of this just a little on the edge there and the same on this side I hope you can see as you can I try and um, keep my hands away but sometimes I forget Now I'm just going to go back down my colours to shade a bit more. So number 24. So just bring the colour back in towards the, lighten it towards the centre. Just going to join it up a little bit on the top. It's quite a simple technique, but I find it quite effective and fun. And um, we're going to number four. Back in with a bit more. And our last one, which is 42. Just in case you, I think I ought to make sure I do show them all to the camera in case people don't want the sound on. And I'm going to just bring that in gently to the middle. And you can see that the dots are definitely a little bit lighter but I want them to sort of stand out a little bit and the best way for that is to just put a little bit of extra colour underneath each one of them to look like a shadow. So I'm going to grab a brown. Now I'm taking this dark brown, this is 77, either dark brown would work. I picked this one because it's got a nice sharp point and what I'm going to do is very carefully just mark out a little bit under each dot. Now if you've got better eyesight than me you'll be able to do this better. There, they do look like they're sticking out a little bit. Sorry for the thought to be quiet while I do this, while I concentrate. Put my head a bit nearer the book and hope you, my head doesn't obscure the camera. That'd be embarrassing, my big head in the way. Whoa, that was totally in the wrong place. Some of the details in this little book are quite tricky. Whoops! Just do the best you can. You could, might be better off with a little gel pen doing this. If you can't get your pencil this sharp or if you're more comfortable with a pen. Right, I can talk again now and that's, you can see that they, I think they look quite three-dimensional now which is quite fun and now we're going to do the stem parts. Now I tend to do those in grey, I feel that's usually the colour they seem to be but I'm going to add just a tad of brown, I'm going to use this dark brown that we've already used, I'm just going to do some very light strokes of shading in a few places. You can see it's a really light layer. If you're unconfident that you can do it this lightly you could always use a lighter brown if you've got one up 
I'm not sure the lighter browns I've got quite would work, which is why I'm um, using this one. I want one that looks slightly grey-like. There we go. And now I'm going to grab my grey. This is quite a dark grey, actually. Number eight. And just go over again the areas I want to be dark. We can take it quite dark under here because there'd be a lot of shadow from this top part. And then around the edge of the stem. Like this. And just take it a little bit into the centre. or we'll blend that in with the light grey. So again here. Just blend it a little bit and grab the light grey to just, oops, just take some colour into the middle. So just, I work from one side to the other. I find it helps me find the middle more naturally. I've left a little bit blank. I can do the same with this one as well. Just leave it a little bit white. I can't see that in my camera. There we go. My camera's got some writing at the bottom. Okay, so that's those. And now we've got these, this bunch to do. Um, now this bunch is quite fun as well. I'm trying to think what colour. I think I'm going to do these blue. I find that blue and orange are quite good friends. I have noticed though that I need to rub a bit out. I'm just going to grab my little rubber. This is my Tombow Mono Zero. I love this rubber because um, it's so small. I'm going to try and rub that bit out. Rubbing out coloured pencil isn't brilliant. It doesn't work that well, but uh, it helps a little bit. So these, as I say, I'm going to do blue. I think I'm going to do a similar technique as I did with the other ones. I'm going to start with my lightest blue and then work through. So I'm going to start with this number 30. This is the very pale blue. And I'm going to give each of the tops of the mushrooms a gentle coating of light blue. You see I've got the pencil on the side. I'm trying to make sure it's as even as I can get. It doesn't matter that much because we're going to add layers of other colours but uh, it's, uh, it's easier if it starts off even. I find that moving a little bit faster helps me get it slightly more even but it might not be the case for everyone. You might find it's better if you move more slowly. It's just a matter of practicing and getting to know what works for you. There, that's just the first coating of that. Now I'm going to go for this one, number 37, and we can, we're going to do a similar to this, so the light's coming straight onto the front. So here it'll be in the middle, so this one's easier. So we're going to put more colour here, and the lines that Johanna's drawn lines on here for us as well. It makes it nice and easy to know where to put the uh, extra colour. So here, and then just fade it towards the middle. I find it's usually good just to have a little bit on the top, but we don't want so much in the centre. You can layer it up on the edge as much as you like until you get the look that you're after. Now this one, the centre is sort of here, so it's a little bit more complex to get the um, colour in the right place, especially here where there's going to be shadow. But I'm going to just basically draw a circle around. Can you see what I'm doing? and then leave a sort of shiny bit in the middle, yeah? And this one is very similar to the first one, so it's facing the same way. So we just need to put more colour right on those edges, and fade it in towards the centre. Now, this one, we're sort of here, aren't we? It's fairly straightforward. So just keep, now if you just build up your layers gently, if 
you're not sure if it's going to be right then you can it's easier to correct any mistakes that you make I say mistakes doesn't really matter but if you want to change anything or go over anything it's a bit easier there now this one I'm going to do more like the first one again sorry my chair's really creaky I don't know if you can hear it so I move around I probably put a bit too much on that one but never mind now this one we've got the middle here the light's going to be there and this one it's a little bit more tricky I find with a smaller one so you run out of space if you're not lucky if you're uh, not careful okay and I'm going to use a third shade you don't have to I'm going to use the number 35 and just to go over those areas where I want it to be extra dark And you can keep fiddling with um, more colour until you get the shade you want. This is fairly pale. I'm not going to put on a thick layers of colour, but you could add more if you wanted to, or leave it in a more delicate tone if you wish. I quite like the delicate because it goes with the orange. And it's still quite vibrant actually now we've got these stems to do now I rather like the brownie color here but I don't think it's going to go with the blue so I'm just going to grab a blue let's try this so where we used brown before to add a tone we're going to add blue so we're gonna, this is number three which is the darkest blue and I'm going to add some blue, darker blue, in areas where I think we have more shadow. So here, around here, and at the top of here, and the edges. Hi, sorry, I have been on the phone for an hour, so I've now got to try and remember what I was doing. But I know I was using this dark blue, so I'm going to carry on. I know you'll remember what I was doing. What I'm going to do is just do a little bit along the very outside edges of the stems, just to give them a little bit of shape. I'm surprised I can remember what I was doing. It was lovely, I was having a natter with my mum. And uh, so that was nice. But, uh, it's important to keep have a good catch up. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit under here, like I did on the large one, and a little bit there, and then try and do a bit on the edge. It's quite tricky on these really narrow stems. I'm just doing a little bit. I'm going to leave that side and under here. A little bit down there and we'll emphasize it with the dark gray like we did on the other one and around here a little bit more towards the bottom here where it'd be more shadowy and I might just do the underside of that one and again around here and down the bottom I hope the um, light is still okay on the camera because it started raining while I was on the telephone. Okay, so I'm going to grab my dark grey. I'm just checking. So I've got brown and a grey. I'm just putting it under the lamp so I can make sure I get the right one. This is number eight. And they just emphasise these slightly darker areas a little bit. Just thinking about where I want it to be a little bit darker. A bit of stubborn white paper there, that won't colour. There we go. Putting my head a bit nearer, I hope you can't see it in, the, in shot. Uh, and again, just along these edges a little bit here and there. Just thinking about where there might be shadow, so where things are crossing. Just put a little bit 
button in. At the bottom here. And I find doing a little bit along the edges of the stems just gives it a little bit of shape. As well. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to get my lighter grey, which is the number 80, and just fill in some more details. So we're going to take more of this. I want this all to look a grey colour, so I'm just going to gently start with a light amount and then just blend a little bit with the dark and get a little bit more colour coming out from the centre there and then pull this down a little. Now I say pull this down a little as if I'm actually dragging the colour. I think if you have a really um, soft pencil you can actually do that. You can move the colour around on the page. With these um, ones you can't but it just it just feels like that's what I'm doing. I think that needs to be a bit darker. There, and oh, we haven't done this one. Just add some colour out towards the outside. And then down the stem there. Same here. And this one. Oh, we haven't done this one. Down here. And now I'm going to have a look in the camera. To see, I think I want a little bit here. Just a little bit there. I think. And here. Just a tad more. Okay, now we have the butterfly to do. I shall pull it into shot and we have the little um, caterpillar. So colours. Now we've obviously got, we've got blue, we've got orange. So what are we going to do? We have to think, are we going to introduce a new colour or have a similar colour or do something different? Now what I'm going to do, I think, is to do the butterfly in a brownish colour. So I'm going to grab this one, which is number 49, and do the inside of the wings here. Now what I like to do with the butterfly is do it darker near the body. On, let me just hold the book still, and then lighter towards the outside of the wing. So you can do a sort of flick technique to get that, try not to flick it outside of the wing like I just did. I got a little bit carried away. And I'm just going to put a bit more colour in there. And the same on this side. A little bit of an awkward angle for me here. But hopefully you get the idea. And down in this bit. Now I find with a butterfly it can look, if you outline the wings in a black or dark brown, it can look um, rather good. I think it looks more realistic somehow. So I'm going to take this dark brown, it's the same one I used here, and do all the outside in just a, in just a, a thick layer. Now sometimes it can be nice to do some dots on the outside of the wings as well. But this one's a little small, so I'm not sure that I'm going to do that. I'll have a think. I'm going to do the body in the dark grey, which is number 8. <clears throat> now I would normally do it a little bit darker on the edge, but this is so little. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make much of an impression of that. But there we go. And our little one here, I'm thinking maybe do a blue, because we've got blue here. So I'm going to grab a fairly dark blue, the number three, and 
he's quite small I'm just going to do a light layer because I want to add a little bit of shading if I can he's so cute he's so fluffy Let's just do those just a touch I want it to be a little bit darker under here and under here now again with him you could highlight each little bit make him look shiny but he's a little bit small for that so I think I'm going to make that do I'm going to zoom out a little so that you can see the whole thing there we go so that's that I hope you enjoyed that one I did I really like doing mushrooms and uh, it was great fun so I hope you have a go at that one and have fun with it um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring